Good morning everybody and happy Sunday. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a video on the anatomy of orchids. I did it in Spanish a few days ago and most of my Spanish speakers friend, Spanish speaking friends liked it so I decided that why not? If I speak both English and Spanish I might as well take advantage of it. So I was going to do it about an hour ago but it started raining now it's nice and sunny outside. It's Florida. What can you expect? Uh, so, anatomy of orchids, when I look at orchids, I want to make sure that people know what they're seeing. I think that it's important for all the hobbyists, all the growers to know about their plants. So, just basic info guys. So, oh, it's dark again. There we go. Anyway, so, there's over 30,000 orchid species and there's new ones that are being discovered every day. Um, that are being described by uh, the botanists and um, I'm just going to talk about the basic stuff that we have here at home like bandas, catlias, phalaenopsis and their anatomy, their structure. So there is two types of growth when it comes to orchids. There is uh, monopodio and sympodio. Monopodio it's like that of bandas. So let me come over to my bandas. It's a little sunny yeah. out, which I don't mind. I actually like the sun, but I don't like the heat. So bandas like this, guys. Let me get it out. This is a Tessalata cross with mini Palmer. It's very fragrant, and it's stuck with my Spanish musk. Give me one second. Oh, so bandas. Bandas have monopodial growth, meaning that. It grows from a main stem. It's gonna go from the main stem, and then it has a apical leaf in the center that would continue growing. You might get some kikis, um, basal kikis, from the bottom of the plant. That um, it's only gonna be one main plant. You might have multiples, like when it gets to a point like my arides over here. Look at my Aries. There's my Aries. This is a mama plant, and then it's got one, two, three, four, five, six babies. They bloomed this year, so it was beautiful display of flowers this year. So monopodio, one main plant. You might get basal kikis. Sympodials are, I think monopodials is like vandas, uh, phalaenopsis. Things that go upright in just one direction. Then sympodials is like catlias. Catlias are like Catlia amethystoglosa. Catlia amethystoglosa. Sympodial, meaning that they could be reproduced asexually through rhizome cuttings. This is rhizome. Oof, new root. Makes me happy to see new roots. It's been raining this whole week, so been very humid so new roots starting to pop and all the catlias so sympodio grows in multiple directions through development of the rhizome and development of new eyes so when I talk about plant anatomy I like to go from the bottom up so I start with the roots and we're gonna end up with the flowers let me go through um, the dendrobium roots Actually, it has a lot of roots. This is a Selefinicia mitrata. Everything has a lot of roots. This is a banda. This is banda tricolor. So roots. You see a green tip that's a growing, actively growing root. But what we actually see is the cover of the root. It's called bellamin. Bellamin. It's like a sponge-like. Uh, it's like a sponge-like um, material that covers the roots. The function of the bellamin is to protect the root. It's to actually um, have an ant on me. It's to protect the root and it absorbs water and nutrients and transport it into the root and into the plant. Now, the only reason why we cut a root is because the root is dead. Otherwise, let the root, if they're green, right now they're white, but as soon as they get wet, it turns green. It goes from the white silvery to a green. 
So do not cut the roots unless you're dead. Because if you cut the roots and your plant might dehydrate, you might have back bulbs and pseudo bulbs are drying back because of the mm-hmm. poor root system. And the fells and landas, the leaves will shrivel. shrivel. Oh, it's early in the morning. The leaves will shrivel, so you need to take good care of your roots, guys. Um, like this one is a dead root, so I want to show you what the actual root looks like. That's the actual root, and then the development is covering. This was a really recent import, but I'm not that worried because look, new roots there. So new roots are coming in. That's a uh, definition we tried on. I have two. I got that one, and I have another one here, bigger plant. So I may actually end up giving that one away eventually. Um, after the roots, I like to talk about the rhizome. The rhizome is mostly seen on uh, sympodial plants, like the calias. The rhizome is the separation between the two seeder bulbs right here. You can see it. The rhizome, it's great because it lends itself to asexual reproduction through cuttings, like I said earlier. And not only that, but the rhizome has eyes. Yes, your plants have eyes on them. You see this little nub in here, and this one back here, and my uh, still not focusing. Uh, okay. Well, let's try again. A little better, but still blurry. That's an eye. That's a dormant growth. That's a node. If by any chance this rhizome was to get broken or die back or have infection on it um, and we end up cutting it the eye would spring into action and you would get a new plant growth from it and you see the bulb a new leaf okay so we talked about the roots we talked about the rhizome remember the rhizome is very important because of the eyes when you do a cutting try to do at least three pseudo bulbs if you're gonna cut the plant because less than that, you're gonna have a chance that you might not have an eye. And then if you do a cutting, try to do it from the, from the front bulbs. This is my front bulb in this case. Back bulbs, or like the smaller bulbs versus the back, you might actually have eyes. Like you see, I have an eye there. I have an eye here. So even if I divide it from the back, there's still a good chance that there will be an eye present and that the plant would grow. But um, back bulbs are more for storage of energy they store the water, they store the nutrients. Same thing with the rest of the pseudobulbs. And this pseudobulb, guys, is a little unusual. It's longer than what you're used to seeing in Cattleyas because this is the pseudobulb of Cattleya amethystoglosa. It's a parasitic by foliate. It grows really, really long. I'm gonna go to my other side. I'm gonna show you some more pseudobulbs. Just that the AC was running and it was just crazy. So, the pseudobulbs of Dendrobium aggregatum. I love, 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 love this pseudobulb. This is Dendrobium tetragonum. It's grossly like a square pattern. Oh, this is Prectacara. That's a pseudobulb. It hasn't bloomed this year yet. I'm waiting for bloom to pop up, bloom spike to come out of at any time soon. There are some plants that simply don't have pseudobulbs, like these guys. This is a leafless, this is a chylochista. It does not have a pseudobulb, it's just roots and a vestigial leaf that ends up falling. This one bloomed already a few months back, but yeah. And let's see. Pseudobulbs, like this is Miltonia spectabili, variety semi alba. Again, rhizome is very evident here. You see the separation between that growth and this growth. So, and then you see the new pseudobulb and this bloom. Flowers are a little past already. It was in bloom a few weeks back. It's already dying down, dying, dying, da- dying back. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of water lately. So some plants have a little yellowing on it. I have to. I have to do fungicide session next week. 
I just need to I just need them to dry a little before I actually go ahead and fungicide. Because if I water on top of already wet stuff, it's not gonna do much. This is open, so I thought I would share with you guys. It's a Kalia, Siam Jade, big plant. This is one of my favorites. This is again suitable. This is a Encyclia cochleata. Well, Prostichia cochleata now. No longer an Encyclia. It was renamed. It's a cockle shell orchid. A little octopus, so roots, pseudobulbs. I mean, roots, rice, some pseudobulbs. So, I'm stuck about the leaves. The leaves, this is white on it because I spray with a calcium supplement. I fertilize the extra calcium supplement because that helps the root system, but I just drench the whole plant with it. Calcium is actually the building block of plant cells, just like it's of our cells and uptake of calcium will help a lot when it comes to maintaining the plant in good health i need to do that more often i have a calcium powder that i need to dissolve and do it more often i should be doing it once a month but with work and everything else it just gets in the way sometimes so the leaves um the bottom of the leaves the back side of the leaves have a thing called stomata. Stomata is actually like the pores of the plant that it breathes through. Uh, it breathes uh, mostly in the early morning hours and in the evening. So if you're gonna do a foliar application of fertilizer or a fungicide, it's best to do it when it's a little cooler in the day and do the spray through the bottom of the leaf instead of through the top. Um, that way it could actually be absorbed through the stomata. If you're doing systemic, make sure you get your roots, obviously, so it will be absorbed by the plant easier. Um, but yeah, those are, um, again, leaves, anything green would do photosynthesis. So the main function of the leaf is to um, do photosynthesize the sun rays and to convert it into simple sugars that would be then... Uh, that into a plant that would help the plant grow and nourish so we talked about roots we talked about the pseudobulbs we talked about the rhizome we talked about the leaves now let's talk about the inflorescence correct word for the spike of the orchid it's an inflorescence if you guys do aos judging uh, american orchid society you will see that they'll call They'll say they have five inflorescences or ten inflorescences or whatever the case might be. But yeah, inflorescences could be anywhere from long, long inflorescence like this one on the Cartiata to something really, really small like this Pluritalis. Uh, let me see if I can get it out of there. It's stuck. And this is a miniature, guys. This is Pluritalis grovii, and that's the inflorescence, really, really tiny. It's just blooming its little head off, or even smaller, it's a little, little androbium right here. It was in bud, so this one actually produces a single bud. Miniature mm, inflorescence is... Again, another miniature. I love collecting miniatures. You guys will see more of that soon in another video. Um, they could go anywhere from really attached to the, to like really close to the sort of both. Ooh, a little. Stratostylus philippinensis. It's a cute little grassy looking plant with white flowers. Hopefully I'll get it to bloom soon. I just got that at my Orchid Society meeting. Yes. Best of all, on the dosa, it's a relatively short inflorescence, and then it produces anywhere from three to five flowers on the spike. This guy here, the Androbium fasciferum, the spikes, I mean, the flowers come out of the cane. Um, let's see if I could do. There we go. It's a very, very pretty coral color salmon very pretty color some of them have hanging inflorescence like the Sanhopias and the gongoras some of them um, 
don't have fluorescence or all like these guys. And like the no build on droviums like these guys. This would um, actually lose its leaves and it would bloom on the cane on the opposite side from where the leaf was. So if it, the leaf is right here, it will bloom over on this side. Okay, let's see what else. One of my favorites is the inflorescence on the cycopsis. It's a sequential bloomer, meaning that it will keep on growing from the leaf tip, from the uh, inflorescence from the spike tip, a new, a new flower over and over and over. This one just fell over this morning. It's my Encyclia applicata. This one actually has an arching inflorescence and then the blooms open along the inflorescence. It's not done blooming yet, it's not done opening. It has five spikes on it, but it fell from the bench since it rained overnight. Okay, this is a Florida native. It's a Florida native, it's native to Cuba as well. In the Caribbean islands, if I could just get it to focus, it's very pretty. Rustica Luthiana. Let's see if I do closer. There we go. Very pretty flower, small flower. Again, I like miniatures, so that's my thing. So, roots, my roots, and then Vanda. Roots. Write some suitable inflorescence and finally the flower. Flowers come in all shapes and sizes. From the encyclia to the prosticia. This one's on the floor because it's up top heavy that the flowers will fall off. This is Catlia Volcano Plum Volcano Queen. And it's two inflorescences on it. This one has two, four, six, seven flowers, and this one has three, six flowers on it. But it's so heavy that I had to put it down on the floor, otherwise it would have fallen over and tripped and I mean and broken the inflorescences, the spikes. Now let's talk about the flower. Let's talk about the parts of the flower. And since you're open here, now let's talk about you. So the flower is composed of five petals. I mean two petals, sorry. Two petals and the sepals. You have the dorsal sepal the two lateral sepals and then the two petals and the lip which is a modified petal the lip itself it's usually a different color like on the encyclia the lip is pink with the chartreuse background and that's a way of telling the pollinator hey this is where you land this is where you should be getting your nectar this is where you get a reward so land here inside the lip there is the column Let's see, I don't want to, yeah, it's easier to see on this guy, so let's go back up. Let's, hold on, let's hinge. I just hinged the, the lip bag and exposed the column. That's the column right there. The column, it's where the pollinia store, that's where the ovary, at the back of the column, that's where the reproductive part of the orchid is. Um, the column looks like a nose from when you look at it from the front. You see those little, that little pink cover there, that's the anther cap. Anther cap actually covers the, covers the pollen, which needs, the anther cap needs to be removed by a pollinator in order to be able to take the pollen from the plant and transfer it over to a different plant. We do this by hand with uh, toothpicks and q-tips but in nature it's done by a pollinator so again dorsal sepal lateral sepals the two petals the lip the column the anther cap and the pollen is the basic structure of the flower and get out just like you again i have a lot of orchids guys i mean i will be doing sessions on different types of orchids if, uh, they bloom I ooh, wait it's not an orchid but it's a plant it's an air plant and it's about to bloom I just want to show you guys really quick how pretty that is it turns bright red as it gets close to blooming and then the blooms are 
purple. It's a Tillandsia. It's mono of my Tillandsia. So I have this one. I have this one over here. It's just growing into a little ball. Eventually, it will, soon it will get to the size of that one. This one blooms pink. I have another one that's like very hairy. That's down here. This one's slower to grow. Much slower. I should probably put it over here instead to get more light. My mind do it. Yeah, I'll not just poke. Finally, open more flowers. Look at this flower, how pretty. It is a species. Phalaenopsis, waxy flowers. So that's it for today, guys. I will be doing toxum pipe pebbles and different type of type of pipe pebbles, like the model leaves, and then you have the strap leaves and the sequentials. I'll be doing talks on catlias and bifoliates and, mon and uh, unifoliates. I'll be doing talks on psidiums. So stick around. Um, I'd like to share what I learned with everybody. Uh, here's another view of one of my growing areas. I've gone a little overboard, but hey, that's orchids. My big grandmother violence up there. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or any concerns, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. Again, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's where you learn. And again, thanks for watching.